I'm Dr. Osama Firimban, pediatric uh, consultant pulmonologist and clinical assistant professor at the ped pediatric department at King Abdulaziz University Hospital. Today we'll talk about the asthma management. Asthma is being defined as a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airway associated with airway hyperresponsiveness and recurrent episode of wheeze with breathlessness and chest tightness and coughing, mainly at night and early morning. Associated also with air flow obstructions within the lungs, often reversed spontaneously with or without treatment. The pathophysiology, it has been shown by this cartoon, it shows the pathogenesis of asthma, started the antigens going to the native T lymphocytes, as you see here, and reactions inside the body subsequently release the interleukins and finally IgE and then subsequently the med mediators of the inflammations like histamines and prostaglandins and these consequence event lead to bronchial hyperresponsiveness and airway obstructions and finally asthma symptoms. The main factors influencing the development of asthma, mainly as host factors or environmental factors like genetics, obesity, sex, and mainly in the environmental factors like allergens, infections, tobacco smoking, and air pollution. The clinical diagnosis is very important. We mainly focus on the history based on the personal data, history of chief complaints, history of present illness, and review of systems. And, and on the history, we focus mainly on these points, whether the patient has or had an attack or recurrent attack of weeds. Does the patient have a troublesome cough at night? Does the patient wheeze or cough after exercise? Does the patient got wheeze or chest tightness or cough after exposure to the allergens? Does the patient cold takes more than 10 days to clear up? Or are symptoms or these symptoms improved by asthma treatment? And subsequently, obviously in pediatric uh, age group, we focus in the physical exam, mainly according to the symptoms of the asthma. Usually, generally, if it is uh, stable, usually we don't have any uh, findings, but sometimes you can see the weeds can be positive, especially in the acute exacerbations, possible cyanosis, drowsiness, difficult speaking, tachycardias, and presence of recessions. Subsequently, we'll go for the test which can help for diagnosis and to monitor the asthma procedures. We'll go for like lung function test, especially will give us a feedback for the spirometers. And we'll focus mainly on the uh, forced expiratory vo volume in one second and forced vital capacities with the value of the peak expiratory flow, mainly to assist the reversibility and the variabilities, and as shown by this paragraph. Another test which help in the diagnosis and support the asthma, we use the skin brick test, as been seen here, to identify the, the predisposing factor which can predispose to the presence of the occurrence of the attack or the acute attack. Also, we should uh, do not forget the level of the total IgE if we need to be investigated. And for children uh, five years and younger, we should uh, identify the uh, presence of asthma and clarify it with the episodic wheeze and cough. And usually there are three categories of wheeze. It will be transient early wheezing, which will be usually outgrow 
in the first year. And uh, usually there is a past history of preterm and parental smoking. Second, the persistent early onset weeds. Usually it's occur below three years. And these symptoms mainly persist up to the age of 12 years. And usually it's associated post-viral infections. The last episode can be late onset weeds or asthma. And these symptoms may persist throughout the childhood into uh, that life. In the differential diagnosis of recurrent weeds, the chronic, we should consider mainly the, the following uh, differential diagnosis like chronic rhinosinusitis, gastroesophageal reflux, cystic fibrosis, foreign body aspirations, primary ciliary dyskinesia syndromes, immune deficiencies, and finally, congenital heart disease. In the management, the Global Initiative for Asthma before 2012, they assessed the asthma severity, and then after that, they initiated the, the uh, therapy. And uh, subsequently, uh, uh, Gina uh, suggests to modify the, this management and focus on the asthma control. And the aim of this strategy is to minimize the manifestation of asthma by therapeutic interventions. And the goal of the therapy are met and to adjust the therapy, assess and monitor asthma control. So asthma control is now the key in the asthma management starting from uh, 2012 and forward. And the aim is to, to see the target, mainly the treatment is initiated and adjusted in a con continuous cycles. Uh, and it is a, a continuous procedure mainly to assess asthma control, treating to achieve control, and monitoring to maintain a good controls. And this circle is driven by the patient's level of asthma control. So currently, we depend on the level of asthma controls, uh, GINA, uh, starting from 2011 and forward. And to see the, the level of control, whether we have a good control or partially, partially controlled or uncontrolled. And, and depend on the characteristic like day symptoms, limitation of activities, nocturnal symptoms and awaking, need for the reliever and rescue treatment, lung function test and uh, exacerbations. With the presence of these, we can modify it or classify it whether it is having a good control or partial control or uncontrolled. And also uh, Gina, they suggest the asthma control questionnaires. The asthma control test is about a couple of questionnaires given to the uh, parents and the child. And according to the score, we can modify the level of the asthma control, whether it has a good control or partial control or poor controls. Pulmonary function test, like spirometers, it's another in, uh, tools to help us to see whether we have an obstructive type or destructive type. This is these, the results like uh, obstructive type. It's suggestive for, for us as a physician uh, the presence of the hyperactive airway disease and the presence of bronchial asthma. Recently now, in Sina, they uh, released the, uh, the Arabic versions of the self-management action plans, uh, which uh, explain to the father in, the, in a color code, green, yellow, and red, whether these green will be in the almost stable uh, conditions, the medium or, or moderate one will be in the moderate, which can need uh, further uh, treatment and in the severe episode what things to the uh, parents who should take the actions 
to go to the nearest medical centers. Uh, the choose or, or the treatment uh, in the bronchial asthma, it's very important to choose the inhaler device for asthmatic children. And this has been uh, approved by the GINA and SINA. Uh, usually, SINA stands for the Saudi Initiative uh, for Asthma. And the, the uh, selections of the device is quite important to deliver the medications to the improper way. For example, the younger age, less than four years, we prefer the, the pressurized meter dose inhalers plus aero chambers uh, with face masks. The alternative device will take the nebulizer with the face mask. For the age between four to six years, the pressurized meter dose inhalers plus aero chamber with the mouthpiece and the alternative device will choose the nebulizer with the mouthpiece. Older children, more than six years, we chose the dry powder inhalers plus pressurized meter dose inhalers uh, with the mouthpiece, or we'll take the alternative device like the nebulizer with the mouthpiece. This is the cartoon. We'll summarize the, uh, the gene approach to asthma management, and uh, you can find the, uh, the same procedures in the, their site uh, in, at the GINA site uh, will be very clarified. Recently, for the last uh, couple of months, uh, Saudi Initiative for Asthma 2014, uh, they released a quick guide for asthma management in children, and it includes the initial emergency management of the acute asthma, and the, uh, select the PRAM scores, which is a Canadian uh, score being adapted uh, in, uh, by SENA. And uh, it also <coughs> includes the, the step management uh, in the outpatient management, include the below five years and more than five years, and also being uh, include the asthma control test below five years, where the, the scores below 80s, it shows uncontrolled asthma. And for five years and more, the score more less than 19, also it's controlled uh, asthma. For treatment point of view, we start um, the main medications being given in the asthma as a controller or reliever. In the form of the controller, we give the medications that have been taken on daily basis, on a long-term basis to keep the asthma under clinical control. While the reliever, the medication being used as needed base that quickly re reverse and re relieve the bronchoconstriction symptoms. The example of the control medications like inhaled systemic glucocorticosteroids, long-acting inhaled beta agonist, leukotriene midifier, and anti-IgE. The inhaled uh, corticosteroid is showed uh, uh, more effective control, which being supported by the couple of study by Nelson and his group, and Rodra, uh, which has been published in the uh, respected ma magazine, it showed that the, in children below five years, it demonstrates a marked rapid and clinical improvement in, in symptoms and lung functions, while in children five years and younger, the use of the spacer device results in a near maximum benefit in the majority of patients. The long-acting inhaled beta agonist, which uh, is uh, called LABA, the LABA sh should not be used as mod a monotherapy in asthma, as these medications do not appear to influence the airway inflammations. LABA are most effective when combined with the inhaled corticosteroids, and this is the preferred treatment when a, med a medium dose of inhaled corticosteroid alone fail to 
achieve asthma control. When used as combination medication with inhaled corticosteroids, LABA may also be used to prevent exercise-induced bronchospasm. Thalmetrol and Formetrol provide a similar duration of protections against bronchoconstrictions, but Fermetrol has a more rapid onset of actions than Selmetrol. The safety of the long-acting long beta agonist for the treatment of asthma, it, it shows uh, the concern about the safety of LABA therapy has led to the appearance of multiple uh, publications and recommendations. Uh, the available clinical evidence, uh, more than 20 systemic review and databases, show the LABA monotherapy significantly increased the risk of the asthma-related adverse effects. The use of the LABAs uh, con commonly with the uh, inhaled corticosteroid significantly reduce asthma hospital uh, admissions and uh, is not associated with the life-threatening events and asthma-related death, especially when concurrent use of LABA and in inhaled corticosteroid can be reasonably uh, assessed and using a single inhaler device. Leukotriene modifiers, it can provide a clinical benefit to all level of severity. Uh, it, it will give uh, partial protection against exercise-induced bronchoconstrictions, also a significant reduction of exacerbations in an insufficient controlled asthma. Omali, uh, Omali is your map. It's the monoclonal antibody directed against uh, immune uh, in, against uh, IgE. The anti-IgE is a treatment option limited to patients with the elevated IgE serum level. Improved asthma control is reflected by fewer symptoms, less need for the reliever of uh, medications and a few fewer exacerbations. Its current indications is for patients with the severe allergic asthma who are uncontrolled on inhaled corticosteroids, although the, does, the dose of the concurrent treatment has varied in different studies. Further investigations will likely provide additional clarifications of the role of the anti-IgE uh, 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 in other clinical setting. Uh, Van Ressens and his group show the, the, the early and the late phase response to allergens uh, challenge, challenge after the 12 weeks treatment with omalizumab and or placebos, which shows uh, obviously with the presence of the treatment of uh, anti-IgE, the clinical improvement uh, compared to the placebo. The management of the preschool wheeze, we should clarify it uh, according to the uh, presence of the environment uh, manipulations and mainly to avoid uh, tobacco smoke uh, exposures and reducing the allergens, uh, pollen and infection exposures and parents and patients' educations. Treatment or pharmacological therapy Usually, we start with the short-acting beta agonist in the right devices and inhaled corticosteroids, uh, plus or minus the uh, systemic glucocorticoids and leukotriene modifier. The inhaled corticosteroids in children five years old and younger, the treatment with the inhaled corticosteroids in children five years and younger with asthma generally produce similar clinical effect as in the older children. But those response relationships have been less well studied. The clinical response to the inhaled corticosteroids may depend on the inhaler choosing and the child's ability to use the inhaler correctly. With the use of the spacer device daily dose less than 400 microgram of budesonide or equivalent 
result in the near maximum benefit in the majority of patients. The use of the inhaled corticosteroid does not induce remissions of asthma and symptoms return when treatment is stopped. The leukotriene modifier in children five years old and younger, the clinical benefit of the monotherapy with the leukotrienes modifier have been shown in children older than age two years. The leukotrienes modifiers reduce viral induced asthma exacerbations in children two to five years with a history of intermittent asthma. No safety concern have been demonstrated from the use of the leukotrienes modifier in children. So in conclusions, symptoms of asthma should be clarified to confirm diagnosis. The variant asthma phenotype differ from patient to another, and clinical asthma phenotype management is individual based. The reference for the, uh, this lecture is uh, based on the established guidelines for the treatment of the childhood and adult asthma. And the main reference was from the Global Initiative for Asthma, GINA, and uh, the Saudi Initiative for Asthma, the European Respiratory Society Task Force documents, uh, and the British Asthma Guidelines, and the Canadian uh, Thoracic Society Asthma Management Guidelines, and finally, the National Asthma Educations and Preferences Programs Expert Panel Report. By this slide, we conclude the first part of the uh, asthma management, and we'll go to the second part of the, uh, this lectures. Uh, now we'll talk about the second part, we'll talk about the asthma, uh, acute asthma management. And we'll start with the definition of the acute asthma. It's been defined as acute asthma as episodes of progressive increase in the shortness of breath, cough, wheeze, or chest tightness. The exacerbations are potentially life-threatening and characterized by the decrease in the respiratory airflow that can be qu uh, quantified and monitored by the management of the lung function test, either it be peak expiratory flow or the force expiratory volume in one second. Uh, the uh, mortality report, mortality reported the, in the patients who have received uh, inadequate uh, treatment or poor educations, and the following uh, should be carefully checked, mainly the briefest history of the near fatal asthma, patient on three or more medications, the heavy use of the uh, short acting beta agonist, and the repeated visits to the emergency department. Uh, when we should consider referral to the specialist center, if we have one of these uh, criteria, the first one will be the acute severe exacerbations, uh, the durations of the peak expiratory flow, uh, persisting or worsening hypoxia, hypercapnia, respiratory acidosis, a pH less than 7.3, a severe exhaustion, and increased work of breath and drowsiness, confusions, coma, and respiratory arrest. The criteria for admissions, the patients who, whose peak flow is uh, less than 60% uh, uh, best or predicted uh, one hour after initial uh, treatment can be discharged from the emergency department. And we should consider the criteria for admissions as the following, any feature of a life-threatening near-fatal attack, any feature of severe attack that persists after initial treatment, unless any of the following is present, like the still uh, suffering from the significant symptoms, previous history of near-fatals, concern about compliance and pregnancies. Our uh, policy in the King Abdulaziz University Hospital uh, in the acute asthma is uh, life-threatening medical emergency. Treatment is undertaken in the emergency department. The initial assessment of the acute asthma, the, we we'll, we'll use the following steps conducted in the, at the same uh, time. First, we'll, we'll go for the assessment of the severity. We'll be shown the, uh, later on in the uh, flow charts. 
and will take the brief history and uh, including the severity, duration of symptoms, exercise limitations, sleep disturbance, current medications uh, to, to check the doses and the devices and the causes of the current exacerbations and risk factors for asthma related death. Uh, third point, in physical examinations, we focus on the auscultations and the use of the accessory muscles and heart rate, respiratory rate, peak expiratory flow or uh, forced expiratory volume, oxygens, saturations, and arterial blood gas, if indicated. And subsequently, we'll go uh, and uh, give the uh, treatment uh, mainly in form of oxygens, and the aim to keep the oxygen saturation more than or equal 94 to 95%. Oxygen administration by the mask, pulse oximetry, used to tailor uh, oxygen therapy. If the ox oxygen uh, still less than 92, it's a predictor of the hospital admissions. Inhaled short-acting beta agonist and uh, should be given as continuous or, uh, per hour or every 20 minutes all for one hour for less than five years, uh, 2.5 milligram and more than five years, five milligram. Systemic steroids if no immediate response, uh, recent, uh, recently oral steroids intake or episode of is severe, or steroid usually injected uh, steroids as IV, either hydrocortisone uh, or methylprednisone, usually in five days course. After that, we'll go for the assessment after one hour uh, on examination to assess the episode, whether the, he have a moderate uh, attack and to see the assess the peak expiratory flow, uh, if it is between 6 to 80 percent, predicted personal best or, uh, or severely less than 60 percent, predicted risk, uh, personal best. And then we'll see whether you have an, a moderate episode. Uh, we should continue the oxygens. We should continue the inhaled beta agonist with the ipratropium promide for uh, children less than five years. Usually the dose is 125 microgram and children more than five years, it's 250 microgram every 20 minutes for one hour. Or steroids, if not given initially to be started and for reassessment after one to two hours if he improved clinically basis. In severe episode, a continued oxygen should be done and inhaled beta agonist with hypotromium uh, promide for children less than uh, five years, 125 microgram and children more than five years, it's 250 microgram every 20 minutes for one hour. And we should start the systemic steroids, IV mag magnesium sulfate should be considered in the form of uh, IV infusions if over 20 minutes as single dose and should be limited to severe cases and it is not for routine use. After that, we'll see the reassessment after one to two hours. If we got a good response, uh, the response sustained uh, more than 60 minutes after the last treatment and clinically he's getting improved and became normalized and no more distress and the peak expiratory flow more than 60 to 70 percent predicted of personal best and the oxygen saturation more than 95 percent then we can discharge the patient at home with the inhaled beta agonist as needed an oral steroid course for three to five days, combination with inhaled meter dose inhaler with erochamber and patient education regard uh, medi medication to be given in proper way. If the response wa was incomplete, we'll, we'll check the history of presence of risk factors for near fatal uh, asthma. And if clinically he still have a mild to moderate signs uh, the presence of the peak expiratory flow less than 60% and the oxygen saturation is not improving, we should consider the admission to the acute care uh, and the pediatric step-down units uh, with the supplementation of oxygen therapy and inhaled beta agonist plus anticholinergic medications and to start or initiate the IV systemic steroids. And if there is no improvement within six to 12 hours, 
patient should be admitted to the pediatric intensive care unit. If subsequent there is no poor uh, or there is no improvement and with the poor response, we should focus again on the history of the risk factors for renal uh, fatal asthma and uh, we should uh, examine the patient looking for the uh, symptom of severity, drowsiness and confusions and if the peak expiratory flow less than 30% and oxygen saturations uh, less than 60%, carbon dioxide is more than 45 uh, millimeter mercury and the, uh, we should start the inhaled beta agonist with the anticholinergic. Uh, IV systemic steroid should be started and we should consider IV beta agonist and consider IV theophylline and we should consider intubation and mechanical ventilation if not improving. Uh, this cartoon will summarize the initial management that we spoke about later, later on and uh, it shows the management of the asthma exacerbation in acute care settings with the initial management and initial treatment and the subsequent response after one to two hours. As you can see, the response, whether we have a good response or poor response, and uh, then we should uh, uh, consider whether admissions or discharge home. And uh, the patient, once he came to the emergency department, the assessment, it depends on the severity of asthma uh, exacerbations. And then we can uh, categorize it according to the presence of the symptoms, either to the mild, moderate, severe, and, uh, and respiratory arrest imminent. And according to the severity, we initiate the management accordingly. And this is the continuation of the severity management. And also for children less than five years, in the, our uh, department, uh, we use the PRAM system, which uh, include the, the signs. It starts from zero to three. And according to the score, we can initiate the management. The PRAM system uh, referred to the, uh, the pre-score respiratory assessment uh, measures, which is adapted from the Canadian system. In acute asthma in children less than five years, early symptoms of acute exacerbations would usually follow an upper respiratory infections, and the symptoms usually in form of shortness of breath, wheeze, nocturnal cough, and exercise intolerance, and the initiation of treatment with two buffs of salbutamols via spacer is recommended. Acute asthma in children less than five years, the immediate medical attention should be taken in case of children less than two years who had a history of poor response to three doses of Saba or short acting beta agonist within one to two hours, saturation less than 92% or the child is acutely distressed in this age group, the risk of fatigue, respiratory compromise, and dehydration should be considered. Thank you very much.